Y luego termino con un canto a la individualidad. I then close this section with a tribute to individuality. As we have seen, entrepreneurial knowledge is exclusive in the sense that each one of us possesses knowledge that is unique in the world. And our unique knowledge, with its particular variety of rich details and subtleties, has never existed before. Nor does it exist anywhere else now. Nor will it ever exist again in the future. You might be saying to yourself, well, what do you know? Here I thought I was a dimwit, a nobody, a dull person. That's how I see myself. But Professor Huerta de Soto says I am unique in the universe. Well, you are. Each of us is unique, no matter how awkward, dull, uneducated or thick-headed we may think we are. Even the most limited people, those who possess the least articulate knowledge, can contribute to the entrepreneurial process in a way that is decisive of the historical development of humanity. I remember there used to be a TV show called L.A. Law. Have any of you ever watched it? I will never forget that an intellectually disabled person worked in the office. Perhaps he had Down syndrome. He was very large and rather awkward, and he worked there in the office. As you know, political correctness and quotas, etc., are very important to Americans. That's all fine. I have no problem with it. So this man worked at the law firm. But what could he do if he had a mental age of only six, even though he may have been 50? Well, you can see him working on the show. He passes out the coffee. He doesn't do a very good job of it, though, because it takes him all morning to pass it out, and he often spills it on the documents. He also delivers the mail with great effort. Well, even he could have a flash of entrepreneurial creativity that would change the history of the world. And his delivering a letter on time or not, or his spilling coffee at a certain moment, could change the world. Think about it. This should be a source of joy and optimism, because even the people society tends to value least, or indeed to overlook, have their capacity to contribute entrepreneurial creativity to the process of the social universe. A poem Leon Felipe wrote in one of his moments of greatest inspiration reflects this truth very well. He writes, No one traveled yesterday, nor travels today, nor will travel tomorrow toward God by this same path I'm traveling. For each man, the sun saves a new ray of light, and God a virgin path. In other words, each of us has a unique and historically unrepeatable path from the viewpoint of entrepreneurial creativity. No matter how small we really are or think we are, and we are all small and insignificant in reality, and no matter how downcast we may at times feel, we should be very proud of our uniqueness. Life is a challenge. Life is an opportunity. It's true that life has its share of problems and uncertainty, but at the same time, the fact that we can take part as entrepreneurial actors, especially young people like you, gives life its spice. This should encourage and challenge us. It should fill us with enthusiasm. I say young people like you, but I'm referring to myself as well. I'm 52. Youth is really an attitude, a creative, entrepreneurial, enthusiastic, optimistic attitude. To be young is to say to ourselves, what a privilege it is to be able to act entrepreneurially in the context of our lives. It's a privilege to be acting now. It's a privilege to be here in class, isn't it? Am I right? Today, Tuesday, October the 27th, 2009, there's nothing better than to be here philosophizing about the privilege it is, about how simply awesome it is to be a man or a woman and to act. We should all be delighted. We're all raring to go, right? We're all going to leave class today full of energy and enthusiasm, are we not? Yes or no? In his work El Greco y Toledo, Gregorio Maranon writes, Each living person, even the most humble, creates merely by being alive. Even the most humble, even a person who lives by blind faith alone, creates merely by being alive. <laughs>